Good morning, Gary. This is Shara Lentz. Uh, this is a video regarding my story for the new book that you're ghostwriting for her. You may remember me as the Refractive Thinker publisher uh, and the academic. I'm doing my first TED Talk this year as well, so hopefully we'll get a little bit of background. Happy to provide you my bio. A lot of things have happened since the last time you saw me at Secret Knock. I'm doing a lot of guest speaking, and part of the guest speaking is this story that I'm about to share with you regarding failure. Many of the talks that I'm talking about is about failure and the fail faster, succeed sooner. As far as I know, I'm the only one speaking about failure, and I've been doing it for more than 20 years. Uh, it seems to resonate as a result of COVID, but I've been teaching failure to my students and to my uh, business clients and authors for a long time. But this is the story that I shared with Clarissa, Clarissa regarding my first failure story that is pretty significant and it's one that's lasted more than 30 years. When I was at the University of Illinois, I was the only undergraduate organ performance major uh, at the time and it was my sophomore year back in uh, back in the day. 1986 is when I joined um, I transferred colleges mid-year. In January, I was provisionally accepted by Dr. Gerald Hamilton. He is one of the premier organists in the world. I was very lucky to be the only undergraduate. I think there were seven or eight of us. And my goal was to play at Notre Dame Cathedral, at Holy Name Cathedral in Chicago, to be the premier organist. My sophomore year, my professor walked into my practice room at Smith Music Hall at the University of Illinois, and I was being dismissed from the program. There was no warning. There was no buildup. It was a monotone announcement, find another line of work. And then he walked out. And it was pretty devastating for me. I'd been playing since I was five years old. There wasn't a plan B. There wasn't a contingency plan. I had never even considered the opportunity that I wouldn't be going forward. Because when you're a sophomore, there's something called a jury. And it's essentially a proficiency exam, a performance, a playing exam that you play in order to become an upperclassman. I wasn't being allowed to take that jury. And essentially, I was found wanting. I wasn't good enough. Now, at the time, you can imagine I was pretty devastated. Very young, less than 20 years old, hadn't planned for any of this. All of my friends are moving on. You can tell I'm still emotional, even after 30 years. And I wasn't even allowed to try. But here's the thing that has happened to me that was very amazing. It really shook my self-confidence back then. I was embarrassed. I was humiliated. I replayed the scene over and over. Now, I was much better than I was ever in high school. My college-level my college level professor when I was in high school here locally was amazed at the things I could do. But I wasn't good enough. And I internalized that failure because what I heard is, I'm the failure. I'm not good enough. And I titled it The Day the Music Died, just like the song. And so here's the amazing thing that I teach about failure is the gift that it gave me that day. I didn't recognize it that day. But Dr. Hamilton really moved me forward in a different direction, much like we're dealing with COVID and forced compliance. He was able to help me shift into a different lane because just because you can play the music doesn't make you Mozart. Just because you want to fly doesn't mean you're going to sprout wings. And a lot of what happens in this day and age is a lot of family support, which my family did not support being a music major. I think they were secretly relieved that I was dismissed. But my professor really saved me for being yet another out of broke musician and someone who was going to try and make my living, which is where my dad objected because I wasn't going to be good enough. Now, here's the difference. I could have stayed in the business of music, could have still played as a hobby, it could have still done, you know, weddings, funerals, that kind of thing. I didn't. That day, I remember, if you don't want me, I don't want me. Well, I don't want you. And I picked up my toys from the sandbox. I picked up my organ bag, my organ shoes, special shoes you had to wear, all of my music. And I walked out of Smith Music Hall that day and never looked back. I put that emotion in a box. I put that box in the back of my closet and I moved forward. Now, I didn't realize it at the time, but I was a really 
acting like a petulant teenager. I didn't know how to process it. No one helped me process failure. I just simply avoided it, put it in a box, slammed the box shut, put it in the back of my closet for more than 30 years. Now, I'm doing a lot of guest speaking on the story. And what has happened is amazing that for 30 years, I went on to have a magnificent career. I have 45 books to my name. I have 25 awards. I have five more books coming out this year. I have a TED Talk that will be in less than three weeks. I have seven faculty awards. I'm a college professor of 20 years. I own two businesses that are successful. I've done some amazing things and I would not have had my university professor shifted me that day. And so what I teach is that failure that day was really a gift. I failed at that time to recognize it as a gift, but it's something that I did eventually. And I tried to go back to see Dr. Hamilton a few years ago. Unfortunately, he's now passed away. I wasn't able to get there in time to thank him for the amazing gift that he gave me. And now as a doctoral mentor myself, I have 74, actually close to being 77 grads this week that have, I have been able to mentor. And some of them, I hope I'm better than what Dr. Hamilton did for me is I help them process failure. I help them find a new line of work and help them understand that they're not their failure. They're not their outcome. It's simply part of the learning process. But here's where the interesting story gets in there and I will wrap up quickly. 30 years was a long time for me to be able to walk out of that practice room and I never played again. Not more than 30 years. Still have a hard time with it. But it was very funny. For the, I've moved 38 times and I find myself home after being divorced twice. Uh, a few years ago, it was about 25 years I've been gone that I started looking for a home. And all of the homes I looked for or looked at had baby grand pianos in them. And I found that interesting. And the home that I'm actually talking to you from actually had two pianos, a baby grand upstairs, a kawaii, and an upright in the basement. Neither one I could get to stay, by the way, in the house, no matter how I negotiated. This is where it's very funny, is that being a musician is not who you are, or it's not what you do, it's who you are to your very core. And I wasn't ready to face the music until last November. November of 2019, a family interviewed me to be the caretaker of their Le Petit baby grand piano for the next 30 years. And I was actually allowed to have, I call her Sarah, but Sarah came home and with me. And this is the messenger that the universe decided to help me with as it sent music. And it's a very interesting story, the fact that this failure is something I'd put on ice for more than 30 years, and now the mu the, mu <laughs> the universe sent me a messenger to be able to say it's time. So I pulled that box off the shelf. I was able to look at it, account for it, face it, process it, and heal from it. Because here's the thing that's very interesting, is that I was in a wheelchair for nine months. And part of this is because I was getting sicker and sicker and sicker, uh, and nobody knew why. My body knew why, because I wasn't living my purpose. I had been playing since I was five years old. It was my sanctuary. It was my church. And I turned my back because I was told I was a failure and I wasn't good enough. And I took it to my core because again, a musician is, is not who you, it's not what you do. It's who you are. And so when November came and that piano came home with me, I do a lot of my books have now been to teach people about how I healed from that failure, but it took 30 years. And at first I didn't play. Um, I have a Siberian Husky who actually leaves the room when I play uh, because it's, piano is a little bit different than organ. It's a little different technique in the restaurant, but I couldn't have a pipe organ in my great room. But the baby grand piano has helped me heal and to understand what a truly blessing gift that was that Dr. Hamilton gave me 30 years ago in college that I didn't recognize. It gave me an amazing career that I wouldn't have had in an area of which I'm an expert, as opposed to an area that I wasn't good enough as a musician. So I hope this story, I have lots of written materials that I do a lot of speaking at as a result of this failure. As a matter of fact, my TED talk will be on the anatomy of failure, which is where failure lives in the brain and why after 30 years, it took so long to process this, but I became very, very ill. And once I started listening and getting into that area of how this works, 
for healing, music came back and I'm convinced that music is what has healed me because I'm no longer in a wheelchair. I'm now kayaking three, four, five times a week. I mountain back two to three miles a day sometimes. I walk my dog. I'm healthier than I have ever been in my life. And part of that, I believe, is because I have finally dealt with that failure and worked on my self-esteem and transferred, separated myself, the skill from myself, the person, to be able to develop that failure isn't me, failure isn't the outcome, failure isn't the destination. Failure was simply the gift that helped me shift into a new lane, that helped me find success where I was always meant to be. So thank you very much. If you need anything else, I'd be happy to share uh, any of the other books that I've written a lot on this extensively, and there will be a new book coming out, um, hopefully after my TED Talk called Failure Has No Alibi. So thank you for the opportunity, Clarissa. I hope this has been of value. And if you need anything else, drsherylentz at gmail.com. Thanks. Bye-bye.